Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Welcome to all our Epic Conquerors. Thank you for joining Mama J and myself, Chad, once again on the Epic Conquerors podcast. Woo! Mama J, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Chad. I'm loving this little four-part series that we're doing. This is part two. Uh, remind everybody what was behind kind of this, uh, but started kind of in a way, two things, a book that you were reading and then a message that I preached recently and they just kind of dovetailed. Yep. So was kind it? of give us a little background here. Oh, it was beautiful. We, well, this, this whole series is based on the sermon that Mama J preached over the weekend, which was all about chasing, following after God hard. And what it does is it's based on four characters that chased, followed after God hard and how by them doing that, the whole trajectory of Christianity was changed. Like if they, for whatever reason, if they never done that, things would have been completely different. We would have been living in a different world today. Mm. And it feels like, Mama J, it feels like we're drawing a parallel to today. Yeah, yeah, so. we're, we're, in that, uh, we're in that situation right now where it's time to really you know, focus on and chase off the God because we could really see the world completely different in 10 years from a Christian Christian standpoint if we don't do yeah. it. And I think the book you were reading from Jonathan Kahn about the return of the gods also dovetailed into this to just show us how even th though these characters also lived in pagan times in their world and had to deal with these pagan gods uh, having such influence in the culture, that th they've actually got a lot of influence in our world now. So just kind of share about that for a bit. Well, it just comes to show that, the, that, that, that those spirits or those whatever you want to call them are always present, right? They're always hovering around like we read in the Bible, always running around the fences on the outside, waiting for an opportunity. And, you know, Christianity had a, when Christ, when Christ came to earth, Christianity came in such a powerful way that it pushed all of that out. That was all kicked out of the Middle East. But unfortunately, over time, we've become lukewarm Christians. Yeah. And we're not falling off the God as hard as we used to. And we're allowing certain things to happen, which it was clearly defined back in the day that we should never move away from God's principles and never, ever take God out of our lives. And by doing that, we're now allowing opening up these gates or whatever you want for these people, yeah. for these spirits to come back in and cause all this chaos. So time to turn it all around, Mama Jay. Yeah, because the Bible clearly states, God clearly states about himself, you shall have no other God before me. That's one of the first 10 commandments, right? And, and that's never changed. And never whenever changed. we think that we can substitute him for something else and dilute who he is or bring in a counterfeit, it's like that ain't happening. Mm -mm. But it happens so slowly, Mama Jay, that's yeah. the problem. You see, like we always say, it's that whole frog in the pot thing. We've spoken about it so many times yeah. before. It, they put it over a period of time. They don't just whack you in the face with it and you're like, whoa, whoa, this is not right. It just happens over a period of time. And before you look back, you're like, whoa, how did we get you? Yeah, you just gradually accept it. And then pretty yeah. soon it's kind of too late. It reaches that critical mass point then where it just takes compounds itself. Because now sometimes you look around and you're like, how did we get you? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, wow, that's amazing. Well, in yeah. part one, we looked at the life of David in light of oh, things he went through and how he followed hard after God. And that's why we titled this four-part series, uh, Follow Hard After God. And today, in this podcast, we're going to talk about uh, Esther. What Esther. a story. You know, the, she's got a whole book written about her. I mean, that's pretty <laughs> profound. <laughs> she wasn't yeah. just a few chapters in somebody else's book. She got a whole book written after her, and she has quite a story to tell. I mean, this lady, she was stripped of her country, of her family. She lost her family as part of that process. She got adopted by her uncle Mordecai, who lived in another whole country. So she grew up in a strange land, a different country. So that's a lot for a young person to go through and lose so much. And mm -hmm. then you feel so inadequate and insecure and so she had a lot to deal with. Yeah, and then become the queen of Persia, you know, which is, you know, back in those days was obviously the almighty powerful, you know, nation in essence. Yeah. And then have to basically, you know, put her life at risk to save her people from the genocide. So yeah. we're going to dig into that, which is a fascinating story. And like you said, yeah. it's all about 
you know, falling off the God hard because if she didn't do it back then, who knows where we'd be today? I think I think you spoke in your sermon, Mama Jay, how this the lineage of Jesus goes all the way no, back. No, that was uh, some of the other oh. character we're going to talk about. <laughs> but still, but Get ahead still, of myself. <laughs> if she hadn't done what she did, the Jewish people would have all been annihilated. So there you go. That's it's the I'm... same kind of big, <laughs> big picture view that we need to take. But I think if Esther could talk to us, she would just say, I felt so out of place. It was the biggest stretch in my life, way out of my comfort zone, because there was this beauty contest and her uncle Mordecai said, I think you should enter that. So she must have been a beautiful young woman, but because of her heritage, Jewish heritage and living in a pagan country and all of that, she didn't feel like she fit. And then definitely she was going to feel out of place in the palace if she did win the contest. Because she just felt like I'm just an ordinary girl, you know. How can I have this? Um, what do you call it? Uh, elevation in my life. I just feel lost in that. But then her uncle Mordecai sent her a message one day, and he said, "Who knows? But you've come into the kingdom for such a time as this." Such a time and, as this. And that's so profound, Chad, because we all feel inadequate to make a difference, really, on behalf of God. Okay. I think. Absolutely. And yet God says, no, you have tremendous value to me. Tremendous. Value. I mean, look, look right there. One, one young lady, like you said, who, you know, never felt worthy of ever being in that position and was encouraged by her uncle Monica. That changed everything. Yeah. And we got to take heed of that. Like there's, we are, like you were saying, Mama Jay, we don't feel that we can make a big difference, but you know, it only took 12 people to change the world. That's right. So, you know, we got it. We got to get rid of that mentality and realize that when God uses us and when the time is right, and if we hear and obey, He can do th anything. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So, amen. Preach it. Woohoo. These, these stories are all great just to reinforce in our mind yeah. how one person can change the world and how yeah. God uses, you know, anyone. And also for those of us out there that are listening to everyone else that's saying you can't do it and you're not worthy and you know you come from the wrong Who side of the tracks you are? <laughs> the wrong side of the tracks or you know you don't look good or whatever it is that's all nonsense that's right that's right i, I always say if god can speak through a donkey <laughs> he can speak through me. <laughs> uh, there's one time the one prophet was going on the wrong direction and god caused his donkey to start talking to him and got his attention <laughs> so i'm like <laughs> If God can speak to a donkey, then I guess, uh, okay. But, you know, we do feel inadequate. And, and I think that's kind of on one hand, it's important that we do feel inadequate in ourselves because our that's adequacy awesome. needs to be found in Christ. Amen. With him, we're more than conquerors. We're epic. But left to ourselves, uh, we are falling short. <laughs> but with God, we're more than conquerors through him. So that's the the balancing that we act that we have to walk through in our lives. But for this little servant girl, once she did all the things to prepare herself to be in that beauty contest, and then she won the beauty contest, which shocked her, but this King had a lot of wives. So she was <laughs> one of many wives and they had a rotation system going on. So it wasn't her time to be able to be in the presence of the King, but what had been happening now is Mordecai was letting her know that Haman, the king's right-hand guy, had found a way to manipulate the king to pass a law that anyone in the kingdom, they could only bow down to him as the king. They couldn't bow down to any other statue or god or whatever, knowing full well that that would give him then the right, according to the new law, to be able to kill and annihilate all the Jews. So we see this kind of similarly paying out, playing out in our world today, don't we? Very much so. And that's and that's what's you know, that's what's kind of scary is when you draw a comparison to these things, you can see how that's happening for us. Mm -hmm. And uh it's you know, that's why these stories are so powerful and to learn the lessons that are behind them. Yes. And it kind of gives God, you know, it's like God gave us his word, you know, and we're blessed today to be able to see. Yeah, you know, blueprint that's happened previously yeah. so that we can actually action it today. And look at you know, how the scripture says, God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. I mean, who would think that the purpose of God could be fulfilled by you winning a beauty contest? Yeah, that sounds pretty woman. secular. 
and a Jewish woman. Yeah, in which they didn't realize she was Jewish because yeah. she lived now in the country. So she was probably different, uh, fair skin or what have you, enough to be able to pass for another culture. But uh, just to think that God can use anything to bring his purposes to pass, even a beauty contest, which in many Christian circles, that would seem like sacrilegious, like to be involved <laughs> in something like that. And yet God used her beauty to make an entry point to be able to turn this whole thing around, which is phenomenal. So we can't out guess God. He's like the master, master chess player. Yep. He's like 10 dimensional. <laughs> there you go. That's how, the right way you say it. That's good. So the storyline kind of goes that once Haman had gotten the king to pass that law, then what happened is one night the king was not able to sleep. So even God can use something like that and just cause him to be stirred and just not being able to go to sleep. So he had one of his servants come in and read out of the chronicles of their kingdom, all the different things that have happened. So that would lull him back to sleep. But in the, course of the reading, it came across that Mordecai had done some amazing things on behalf of the king and saved his life and so on. So the king says to that servant, have we ever honored this guy? And the servant goes, no, we've never honored that guy. So I love this part of the story, Chad. So the next morning now, the king's all fueled up on, I need to honor this guy. He saved my life. So Haman comes waltzing in. He had just talked to his family the night before with great glee that he's going to build this um, gallows to hang Haman on or Mordecai on because that's his arch enemy. He hates Mordecai being in the palace with him. And so they're all gleefully planning to build this gallows. So he waltzes into the palace and the king says, you know, what should I do to honor somebody that has saved my life and that has served me well and all this? <laughs> and Haman's thinking, oh, he's talking oh. about me. So, yeah, beat the chest, man. <laughs> beat the chest. That must be and, me. And so he says, well, I think you should put on one of your finest robes on him and you should put on one of your finest crowns on him and just have someone parade him around in the the open, uh, what do you call that, open uh, place in front of a palace or something. A oh, courtyard or something parade him around and just let everybody know hail you know this person has blessed the king and the kingdom and the king goes man that's a great idea i want you to do that for mordecai <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh he's just like crushed because now he has to do it and he has to go lead mordecai around on the king's finest horse with the king's finest robe the king's finest crown and just say this is the person that the king is blessing because you know it's just like touche god touche <laughs> you know what i take out of that mom jay is, is that god even uses the wicked yes to, to bring around the ultimate result That's right true. It's so funny. I just love it when the devil bites the dust. It's like, yes, you turkey. <laughs> he messes in our lives so much. And when God smacks him one, it's like, yes. And so I, I really like that. But back to Esther now and her preparation that she needed to do to be able to kind of step out of line in the rotation for her visit with the king so that she could make a request for the king. So God gave her a strategy. He gave her a blueprint of how to do it. And so she had several special meals that she prepared for him. She prepared herself as well. King was so enamored with all this wonderful attention that she was bringing to him. And so he kept asking her, what do you want? What do you want? So she's leading him along. And she says, well, for the final special meal that I want to prepare, would you invite uh, Haman to come in and join us. So the king puts out that invitation to Haman says, come and join us. So Haman all pop up in himself again, thinking, woo, I'm going to get this special audience with the king, not realizing that while he's eating uh, Esther's food that she's prepared, that she's now going to expose what he had done to kill all the Jews and then to let him know that she's a Jew. And so when that happened in that dinner, whoo, the king turned on Haman and had him hung on the very gallows that he had built for Mordecai. So not only was he humiliated to prance Mordecai around on the king's horse and all that, but now he had to hang on those gallows that he had built for him. So I'm like, yes. Yes, yes, yes. 
such a powerful story, Mama Jay. Like, uh, how, you know, stepping out of that boat, and sometimes it's an uncomfortable situation, right? There's, you know, yeah. you can feel the call of God, but you just, you, you just, you just don't want to do it. And it's so, that's why having discernment and that's so important because these are things that I feel that we're going to really start to experience as we move forward in these times. You know, we're going to, God's going to speak to us, but he doesn't speak to us now. And we're going to have to learn how to hear and obey because it's going to be a matter of life and death. Yeah. And sometimes in our lives, Chad, we go through seasons where, or decades even, where we feel like we've been stripped of so many things in our lives that were a part of our life that was important to us. And we find ourselves like a fish out of the tank, you know, like this is not my my people, this is not my place. This is not my, what I'm used to. This is not where I feel I fit. And maybe there's epic conquerors out there just listening to us today. And, and you're feeling like you're in a stripping position where everything's being taken away and like what and why and where and all that. But Esther, like others in the scripture that we could read have been stripped in order to reposition them because I've discovered in my long years of serving the Lord, sometimes we hang on to our comfort zone areas so much that like God has to pry our fingers off to get us to move forward into another place where he wants to use us for his glory. But we're so comfortable where we are with the familiarity of everything. We just want to stay there. Yeah. Your boat can't go to the other side of the lake unless you let go of the anchor. And so otherwise you can only go so far. So that's an important principle. That's a vital principle. You can, you know, you can, you, you, God can only use you as much as you can see it, like, and you can move. He can't use you if you're going to be stuck in your small little world. Like, the, I think the call right now is, is asking you to expand your territory, expand yes. your, Ooh. expand your community, get out there, like, get reconnected with, with, you know, with people out there and start to, because that's what it's going to take. We're going to, it's going to be, it's going to need that. Yeah, and we can see how in our world's narrative today, all this political correct nonsense and other kind of stuff, all in an attempt to stifle our voice and to take away our free speech and all of these things. And so as a whole, as a people at large, we have kind of withdrawn then and kept our opinions to ourselves and so on. Uh -huh. But it's coming a time where we have to have the strategic plan of God like Esther did of how to win people over in such a way that in that split second moment, the tables turn and they get hung on their own gallows and they get humiliated um, with the evil intent that was actually in their heart gets exposed. And so if we just go in like to cause havoc and do all this stuff and say things out of place or out of timing, we can cause more problems. But if we will get the strategy of God, that's why we're saying follow hard after God, because God yeah. knows how to give us the blueprints, the formulas that we need to navigate a field that's full of landmines <laughs> so that we can walk safely across. And if we follow hard after him, then no matter what we're facing, uh, we'll have the word of the wise, the wise tongue, and uh, yeah. God will set us free. And I think that's that the most important part about that is having God's strategic plan, yeah. not our strategic plan, because obviously that's not going to go anywhere. But like you said, Esther, she had God's downloaded strategic plan that was guaranteed to work. Yeah. And I think, like you said, by following hard after God and really connecting and having that personal relationship, we're going to be able to get those downloads yeah. to be able to know how to navigate certain situations yeah. in his strength, not in ours. Because if she'd gone in there uh, with her own plan, yeah, like, uh, she would have messed it all up, you know, and just cried and carried on and said, but I'm a Jew and, yeah. you know, la, la, la. But she wouldn't have had the king's favor. But so she knew how to operate in the protocol of what was appropriate so that she could get the thing. And I think we with our, especially here in America, with the constitution that we have and the, the Bill of Rights that we have and those kind of things, we need to use those things to push back and bring forth one nation under God back again. We can't just shout and say a bunch of stuff and make people more angry. We've got to be strategic and wise about it and then speak in due season at the right time to the right person who can then switch everything up. So that's a lot Preach of it, Ooh, woo. 
<laughs> so again, that kind of goes along with the seven mountain strategy that we learned so about a decade ago or so, but it's true that there's demons that influence every societal influencer in our culture. And mm -hmm. we have to be wise and strategic how we navigate those mountains, those influencing pillars of our society, so that we're at the right place at the right time, like how Esther was, so that we can make a difference. And sometimes it starts just in the smallest little, like the school board or the county seat or any kind of those little things, but those are the ones that form and shape the laws. And we can't just automatically jump up to vice president of the nation or something. We we start and build our way up and our influence up and take the demons out level by level until we have conquered that mountain. So there's a lot of work to be done, but we can do it. That's always a lot of work to it. And, and it's and a lot of those a lot of those Christians are already in those places. They just aren't acting on it just yet. So yeah. I, I just go back to that's why I think this is such an important uh, series. It's like follow hard after God because when you do that, the plan strategy will be revealed and the revelation will come to you because yeah. that's what we're looking for. So yeah. like it says, kingdom of God first and everything else shall be handed unto you. So in this, right. in this sense, chase after that. Don't worry about what's the plan, what's the strategy, how are we going to get this done? Oh, my goodness, the, the, whatever it is, it's just like chase after God. Yeah, because the scripture says if you worry about all that, it doesn't add one inch to your stature or one more dollar in your bank account. None of that is going to help you at all. It's just going to make your body sick <laughs> because all that toxicity of negative stuff. So we have to follow hard after God and get his strategy and his formula and then work it. Mm -hmm. And as we work it, then God puts favor on that. And there's no devil in hell big enough to stop it. Well, God's already put, he's already given the strategies in that all year already. Like, you know, for instance, can God's already gave you that strategy 44 years, 50 years ago. Yeah. You know, because that strategy will be, you know, like anything. It's already planted all those years ago for times such as this. And this yeah. will come out and it'll be used to make these yeah. things. Chad's talking about CAM, which stands for Kingdom Advancement Ministries. It's an evangelism discipleship equipping ministry with a full-on whole strategy for churches and organizations to be able to mobilize the body of Christ and equip them for the days that we're living in Amen. with the tools that they need to be able to influence the culture around us and the people around us. So it's a very exciting ministry. There'll be links under this episode that you can click on and go to how you could get a hold of that training for yourself if you're not in a church that has it so that we can equip ourselves because the Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God. So you have a responsibility to invest in yourself and get the equipping when it's available and Thank God, Chad, in the last five, six years, we've been able to put it online. So there's no excuse, really. You can get the training. You can do your due diligence and you can invest in yourself and you can be a kingdom mover and a shaker in Jesus name. Amen. And that was all God inspired too, Mama Jay. Look how when you started that. that strategy, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there was, no one was really even doing it back then in that yeah. way. It's kind of grinded too, because that was the word of the Lord. Put it on yeah. because yeah. this time is coming and yeah, this time is arrived. Yeah. And when you work it, it works. Well, man, we've come into this place now where it's our time for our spiritual weapon and our power affirmation. I love this part of our podcast because it helps us to just narrow everything down to what should I focus on? Get our weapon in place and act on it. And then our power affirmation, declaring it and decreeing it. So uh, what's your spiritual weapon for this particular Podcast on Esther. Spiritual weapon's got to be God's courage. Mm. Not my courage, God's courage. Because Esther had to have God's courage to stand and put a plan into action as a Jewish woman in a Persian society. And like you said, calling on the king outside of the normal protocol. Like you don't do that unless you've got the courage of God inside That's you. Right. That's beautiful. And she heard from God. And when God speaks, his faith flows. So when God speaks and his faith flows into you, that's where you rise up in God courage and are able to go forth and conquer in Jesus name because you have the plan and you can follow <laughs> that plan. So it takes God's courage that comes from hearing God, which is awesome. Uh, my weapon that I would spotlight for this is preparation. And part of our preparation is following hard after God. 
to get the plan, to get the strategy, to prepare ourselves to be in the right heart, the right mind, and not be full of ourselves or um, thinking too highly of whatever our own opinions, but recognize, submit to God in all of these things, and then just do what he says with that God courage. I think that's fantastic. So preparation is our part, and that takes in time with God, hanging out with him, listening to Epic Conquerors podcast, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> reading I mean, the yeah. Bible, prayer, all these wonderful things, um, fellowship with other believers, all of that strengthens and fortifies us to be able to be an influencer in the world for Jesus. And then our weapon was courage, God courage and preparation. And our affirmation is, I am filled with the courage of God. I am filled with the courage of God. Um, oh, I like that so much. Are you ready? We do the yes, drum yep. roll, we count to three, and then we shout it out. I am filled with the courage of God. Amen. Here we go. Drum roll, please. One, two, three. I am filled, filled with the courage of God. God. Shout it out, Chad. Say I am it. filled with the courage of God. Ooh, yes, we are. Because we know that no place is out of place if you're in God's place. So therefore, we can go forth courageously in Jesus' name. Epic Conquerors, thank you, thank you for checking us out and for passing our podcast on to your friends and family. You know, the things that we talk about is because we feel God has put it in our hearts to, this is the message for the hour. And we just are grateful to the Lord to have this opportunity to speak into your life how God is ministering to us and let us encourage one another because that's how we go and grow. And so as we help others find, for example, this podcast, uh, then we're helping them to grow and come alive. And we all then will find our place in God that he has for us like Esther did. And maybe it'll come through avenues that you never imagined that God could use that experience in your life. And yet that could be the very catalyst thing that will cause the victory to come to pass. So you can't outguess God. (laughs) His ways are beyond your ways. His thoughts are way higher than your thoughts. His plans are way different than yours. But if you trust him, you're going to be in the right place at the right time. That's a a great way to end this podcast, Mama J. Awesome. Wow. I'm surprising myself here. (laughs) Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Epic Conquerors, we're going to say ciao for now, but it's been a delight. We'll see you next time, Mondays and Fridays, our episodes drop. And the next two, we'll talk about two other characters and learn from their story. So God richly bless you. Bye-bye. Ciao for now.